guys, welcome back to another episode of Oddly Adventures and episode 6 of our Sunfish Sailboat Restoration. For those of you who are just joining us, my name's Tyler and I'm restoring a Sunfish Sailboat. Um, in this episode, we're going to be examining the interior of the hull as well as cutting deck plates, fairing, and prepping for painting. Uh, if you'd like to see where this all started, click one of these links over here. And if you'd like to see the playlist of every video about the boat, click on this link here and it'll take you to a playlist of every video in chronological order. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so I'm just tapping around here to find out where the supports are underneath um, so I don't drill into them and accidentally cut them out when I install the inspection ports. As you can see, I'm measuring out the placement for the inspection ports now. Um, just to find the middle so it looks aesthetically pleasing when it's uh, fully attached to the boat. After I found the middle, I went ahead and I used a compass to um, trace out the exact size that I needed and went ahead and drilled a hole in the middle so I could fit my jigsaw blade down in there and go ahead and cut out the, um, the hole for that. So I've gone ahead and cut the hole for the deck plate that's going to be inserted in here. Um, the reason I went ahead and cut that was because when I was doing some of the sanding and stuff on the hull, I noticed some spots that were soft in the deck and was concerned that the inside of the hull was uh, waterlogged. After I cut the hole, I kind of, after sticking my hand inside to kind of retrieve some of the cut off pieces, the inside of the hull does feel kind of humid and damp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up um, a light bulb down in there and also a fan to kind of circulate some air and hopefully dry out the hull from the inside out. The good news is as you can tell the foam core inside the deck does actually look pretty good. Also in addition I'm going to cut a second uh, hole um, in the deck um, in the forward part um, another four and a half inch deck plate and um, I'm not quite sure yet where I'm going to install that, so we can take a look at some of the uh, choices. All right, so the second place I've decided to install um, the deck plate is right here in front of the slit for the dagger board. Um, after kind of tapping around the hall, that seems like there's like no supports or anything under there, so I think that'll be the next the next best place, and it won't interfere with the uh, mast step or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out and put that in. Alright, so after cutting out um, the hole for the front deck plate and putting my hand down inside, it does feel kind of moist down there as well. Not as bad as the back, but I'm definitely glad I cut this deck plate out. Um, this will allow me to air out the hull over the winter and hopefully uh, prevent further damage from occurring. And if further damage does occur, um, it will be pretty easily um, attended to. I can just pop open the deck plates and put a fan down there and start airing some stuff out. Again, the core material on the front looks actually pretty good as well, but this is the top. Um, it is pretty thin in some areas though, which I find interesting. Alright, so now what we'll do is we will go ahead and put some, uh, like a light source down in here to hopefully heat some stuff up and a couple of fans to kind of circulate the air around. Hopefully we'll get these hulls dried out in a few weeks. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove about a quarter inch of the foam around the, both holes um, and replace it with thickened epoxy eventually 
just to provide a barrier between the foam and the outside world so the foam doesn't uh, absorb up any water and cause further damage. Alright, so now that we've got all of our blemishes and holes prepped, I'm going to go ahead and fill all of them with a thickened epoxy uh, resin. Um, this should provide uh, waterproofing and um, a surface that can be fared so that the hull has an even shape to it. This is me filling that quarter inch to half inch of foam that we removed with the Dremel tool uh, with the thickened epoxy as well, so that when the deck plates are inserted, if any water were to leak in there, that it wouldn't get into the foam and uh, cause the foam to rot out. Alright, so I'm just going to continue to fill all the rest of the holes and blemishes in the boat that need the thickened epoxy, and we'll let that cure up, and then we'll move on to some sanding. Alright, so it's been a few hours and all that thickened epoxy is dry, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with uh, the orbital sander and just go ahead and give the surface um, a nice bearing so it's even with the rest of the surface around it. Alright, so after all the epoxy has been sanded smooth, I'm using a Bondo uh, body filler compound to go ahead and fill in all of the micro cracks and scratches and pits and everything like that um, to give the surface a perfect finish. After all that's dried in about 20 minutes, you can go ahead and hit it with the sander and smooth it out to your, uh, to your final surface that it's going to be painted. Alright guys, sorry for that abrupt em ending, but uh, my camera ran out of battery. So um, I finished up fairing the rest of the hull and basically prepping it for paint. So in the next episode, episode 7, we will go ahead and tape off um, all of the aluminum trim, prep the boat for paint, and begin painting. Um, it's starting to come together and I'm really excited about it. So look forward for our next episode. Coming out soon.